Hi everyone, we're Michelle and David and welcome to the Explore Us channel. again everyone, David the Developer Explorer Oz Traveller again and uh, we'll have a look at track logs. Uh, now track logs are uh, accessible via the data menu and you can select track logs. I've got 257 of them. Uh, my track logs are mainly automatically generated via our use of the tracker app and every time we leave or return to our house or our uh, horse yards or other places that we visit I've got it set so that the system will create a track log every time we leave our geofence have a look at the tracker tutorial when it comes out uh, it'll talk more about that usage but uh, track logs are also recordings that we've done of every trip and thing that we've done uh, so we've got quite a list of them so if I just pop in to our personal list uh, you can see each of your track logs in, in a list uh, on the system um, and you've obviously got the ability to have personal track logs which are your own recordings shared track logs which are track logs that other people have recorded and you've uh, connected to the share their shared resource so you have access to their their data and obviously recent like uh, all the other areas of the site the places and the treks we've got filters um, and the, the the filters in here uh, very similar to the trex filters in fact they're exactly the same as the trex filters and you can set whichever filtering methods you want. Um, we've gone through all the filters in the others. Uh, if you wanted to just see your walk runs, for instance, and apply that, your result set would come down to the number of uh, track logs that you have allocated to the walk run setting. You've got to put that in. It doesn't, the, the, the suitability thing is not added automatically. You have to put in a suitability for those filters to work. Uh, otherwise, it'll just appear in, that they, they, there will be no filter of the results. Okay, so I've got two uh, track logs that I've got in the um, walking category, and these are the ones I want to have a look at. Like all the others, it'll tell us our distance from where we currently are to that track log line, to any part of that line, the closest part of that line. Uh, so this Ellisbrook Valley trail run is uh, 37 k's away, uh, and the Yanship is 30 k's away. We've got photos in both of them, and this is the lock status. Um, so these, both of these files are unlocked, so you would be able to go and have a look at these files on the track logs page on the Explorers website. Um, if, you, if you have a look at the list, uh, you'll be able to find the Yanship, or if you search Yanship or Ellisbrook, you'll be able to find those within the system and have a look at the, the data that we're talking about here as well. Uh, obviously, other symbols, if I just quickly whack out the filter, um, other symbols that will appear is locked and um, shareable. That means that people who have a link to it can access it, uh, otherwise it is hidden. I'll just go back to the walk because they're the ones that I wanted to show you, that I wanted to work through. So let's have a look at our Yanship. Uh, obviously again like everything else, left swipe, uh, activate some buttons, um, delete obviously and edit and add to a folder. I've got this particular track log in a folder. Uh, um, uh, we've done folders, uh, this one's in test places for one of a better folder to have it in. Um, and then obviously the edit control uh, allows us to edit the elements of this. I'll have a look at that once we open it and delete obviously will prompt us and we can delete the content. I don't want to delete it. If I just tap it and go into it, our mini map will show us the line on the map. It'll also show us uh, if we have them loaded geo reference photos that have been uh, added to this track log. You can add photos at any time. If those photos were geo referenced, uh, you, you, in other words, your device had the GPS turned on and you were recording the GPS location in your photos, they would appear on the map in the positions where they were taken. And the little, this little red uh, marker here, which is on the currently active photo, if there is a little red marker there, it would be duplicated on the map on the left. So there's a marker there and there it is up there. So that photo was taken at that spot. So then that scrolled down and then that one's at that spot. If I happen to slide this um, control around, it will highlight that photo and that photo was taken there. We can obviously enlarge the photo, have a look uh, at it, and we can close it out. 
obviously as we own this file we can also delete the folder the, the, the photo if we want to remove it from the file okay so that's the photos uh, and again they're in the offline photos database uh, we've discussed that also uh, before these photos it, it, once you've opened it and you viewed them they'll come with you whether you're online or offline so I said we had a suitability uh, value for walking in this one this is a, a run that, uh, that Michelle and I did uh, from me 29 K's the length of the actual journey is 11.6 K's uh, the number of points that were recorded it's just an interesting statistic and the share status which is open and obviously the description that we've added uh, to the file okay so that's the file other tabs we've got we've got the segments so this particular file is made up of 12 segments and each of these segments is telling me the date the start time and the end time I know that this was recorded off a TCX file pardon me and a TCX file is a Garmin um, fitness file this was actually recorded on my wristwatch my Garmin watch um, and I was able to export and import I was able to export that, that file from the Garmin system and import it into Traveller um, obviously importing the Garmin specific files actually also been able to import my heart rate data and not you know, unless you're importing um, uh, files that have heart rate data built in them you won't see the heart rate information but we actually have built that into the app for running and walking uh, activities so that you can actually capture um, you know some more information uh, like your heart rate that you were doing and this was as I said this was a run uh, I can't imagine I don't know whether it was a particularly fast run 8.3 kilometers or 9 k's 10 k's an hour these each of these segments is around about a kilometer long that's what my Garmin wristwatch is set to uh, take laps at and so that's how that's been recorded if I click on any of these segments it will highlight them on the mini map uh, and it'll show you which specific segment that is so you can just click through and see each segment one of the other things I didn't turn on was that you can put on segment markers by clicking on the uh, places icon marker here and it will turn on the segments so you can see the segments and in some cases these would be your overnight locations if you were doing a journey um, um, using the tracker that would be overnight stops in this case it's laps uh, so there's 12 segments in the file you can leave those on or you can turn those off it just highlights where you're up to so uh, these are the segments I've obviously got this button here that allows me to do an edit so if I press on edit here I've now popped up into the edit control for this segment and what you can see is that as I move my cursor along the mini map icons or the mini map items it's showing me the position number and the lat long and the time of each of those segments that was recorded as I did the journey so if I tap on any of these I'll get some more controls so at position 95 I can actually now move that position so I can actually drag it somewhere else and confirm that move and it has moved it on my file uh, I could also uh, delete that position if I wanted to and I'll just delete that so it's taking it away and the other option I can do is split um, if before I do too much damage to this particular file I may just cancel this and I'll show you something else as well that might be handy for you if you're doing any of those sort of advanced editing functions of your track logs um, in the edit control if we go into edit where we can give it a name and our description our line color we've also got the recorded date uh, if for some reason your import or wherever you gain the data from didn't correctly bring in the recorded date you can come into here and change the date and the time of the recording and obviously the lock status and the suitability score the suitability thing so this was my walk run as we saw before so what was that smart thing I wanted to show you I don't want to destroy my Yanship NP ghost house trail run file because uh, I put a lot of work into it so I'm going to make a copy of it and so to make a copy of it if I come in here and change the name and add the word copy say I can make it anything uh, make it uh, one I've got an option now because I've changed the name to make a copy so if I press copy it will create a copy of this file and load it up for us we're now in Yanship NP ghost house trail run one there's no photos associated with it but it is showing us the markers from our previous map um, that's a bit of an, over, an, an oversight ignoring that moving forward if we go into our positions now and we go back in to these segments that we were talking about editing things if we edit 
we can come down here. I showed you move. We can move it and confirm and it'll move it. I showed that we can delete it and that's all great. There's another feature that we can do and this is a segment. Uh, if we come say to the middle of it, we can split it. So what's that done? It's created a segment here and a segment there. If I save this segment change, what we should see is once it's done the refresh and sorted itself out, that segment has now been broken into two here and here. And so it's already computed that that's now, instead of being around about a kilometre, it's 470 metres and the other one was 560 metres. It's already cut up and moved all the specific parts of your heart rate and your elevation charts and all the other information that's relevant to that segment. And you'll see there's the first piece of it and there's the second piece of it where we split it. So splitting uh, the segment allows you to, um, do, to have some more finer controls or to analyze the specific data of each segment. One of the things I didn't show you is when you're clicking on each of these segments, if your recording supports the data, just like these do, it has an elevation, a slope and a heart rate. This will be graphed for you for that segment. So you can see the distance at the bottom, you can see the elevation, and you can see, in this case, the heart rate. I, and unless you're doing TCX imports, you probably won't see the heart rate. Um, but I'm showing you some of the advanced features that we've got. So obviously you can see that my heart rate was dropping those here as I was going downhill. And then obviously as we started going uphill, my heart rate was rising uh, as I plateaued. So you know that indicates that it's following along. I was obviously running a little bit faster on this segment. Yep, 9.5 Ks, so the heart rate stayed up around about the 130 mark. Um, so you can analyze your data quite heavily and obviously with that segment splitting um, you can break it down even further to have smaller pieces either graphed or removed. One of the things I didn't show you, um, if this there's a few segments in your file that you don't like or are errors, left swipe again on that segment and press delete and it will delete that segment from your file um, completely. There you go, it's disappeared. So you could use the, the splitting tool um, to split a segment and then delete after it if you wanted to start and finish at a certain place. You could do it, it's like a manual cropping tool I guess. You would split wherever you wanted to split and let me just remove that other piece of that split segment. So we're going to start the, the line that bit further along where we did the split. Now that's where we split uh, that segment before. We've obviously now removed it from our file. <coughs> it's done and dusted, it's saved that way. So Yanship NP Ghost House Trail Run 1 um, now emits that first bit of data. So that's the editing functions and the segment deletion. Uh, it works re relatively well. If, you've, if, you, um, if we just go back to the information panel, um, we, we went through the edit control quickly when I was showing you how to make the copy. So if we change the name again, we could make another copy um, and you could make as many copies as you need. Obviously, I've got this set to open uh, or shareable, which allows the sharing button here to appear. So pressing this would allow me to share this with anybody I like using this on your device. It pops up just like this with a window of how you want to share it. And of course, we could use our, uh, our folders control. Now one of the things that is a little bit different, uh, I'll just go back to our list again and you'll see that we've now got three results because we made that copy. Uh, you'll also see that the um, it's, it's changed the file date, uh, sorry it's changed the distance here because we've deleted a few segments out so the distance is now shorter than the original because we deleted about 1.6 k's out of those two bits that we were editing and playing with. You'll see there's no photos, but you'll see that it's got the share status still set. Okay, so there's one more thing about track logs that's a little bit different than, it, than, than we've had before. On the map, if you want to see uh, a track log, uh, if you click onto one of these and you click on the map icon, it will show you that on the map. Obviously, I've been through a few track logs, looking at these track logs uh, back and forth. So it's got a, a history of the things that I've looked at being the the trail run one and the trail run. So it's allowed me to select which one I want to see on the main map when I go back to the map. So I'd like to see Ghost House Trail 1. So there's Ghost House Trail 1. Obviously Ghost House Trail is going to be sitting right on top of it. So it's not uh, easy to see. You can see where this red marker starts and finishes. That's where we chopped it because we've also got trail run, the other one, visible underneath. And they're both colored blue. How confusing. 
uh, I shouldn't have done that. I should probably have made this one a different color so that we could see it um, differently on the map and now it's disappeared. So that all wasn't such a great demonstration, was it? I'll just click it back on. And why did it disappear off the main map, you might ask? And there it is, you can see it a bit clearer now. That's the one and that's the original one. Why did it disappear off the map? It's because within our map layers, we don't have it turned on. There's no way to turn on a track log on the main map uh, from the map layers control. We have to do it from the folders control. So if you've got um, some track logs that you want to have visible on the map, add them to a folder and then make that folder visible on the map. That particular, this particular track log is not in a folder. The track log underneath, the original one, is in a folder. And it's in the folder test places. So having the test folders place, the test folders, test folders folder, test places folder turned on. Well, that was confusing because I've got all folders on, is making that map, that appear on our uh, main map all the time. It will always be there uh, while those folders are turned on. If I turn the folders off, it'll go out. Uh, I've also made a trek of that particular, let me turn the treks off so we don't get confused. I've made a trek of that uh, particular file as well. But so the folders, that file is in a folder so it's turning on. The other one we created wasn't. If I quickly add this um, one file to a folder, and we'll add it to entertainment. If we go back to our main map, we should expect to see that that is now turned on because we had all folders on. So if we turn on just entertainment, it'll only show the light blue one. And if we had that and test places turned on, we would see both. And in the case of having all folders, we'd obviously see both. So to make uh, track logs visible on the map all the time, they need to be added into a folder. So there's track logs. I hope that uh, helps understand how the track log system works and shows you some of the advanced controls of editing, deleting, splitting uh, of those track logs and adding photos with GPS referencing into the track logs and sharing. Thanks for using Explorer Oz Traveler and we look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.